fished this spot three times this season. The first two times I hooked fish and lost them both. Then the last time, oh, there's a big one right in the middle of the hole. I'm watching him. I don't know whether you can see him on the camera or not, but there's a big trout right in the middle of the hole. There's a little one coming after. I don't want the little one. If I hook the little one, I'll speak the big one. Oh, I've got land on his head. I might got him. I've got land right on his head and he grabbed it. Come up. <laughs> yes, I landed right on his head and he grabbed it. This was the bigger one. I was watching him feed. I, I thought it would cast too close. It's funny. When I was looking at this fish, I thought he looks very lean. And now that I've caught him, have a look at how lean he looks. He looks quite underweight. Hopefully with a bit of warmer weather and a few more bugs in the water, this fish might put on a bit of condition. The first cast, there was another fish at the back. Nice little brand. I'm going to have to release him from way up here, but he'll be fine. You watch. Gone. He's not floating. He's not dead. The world hasn't ended. <laughs> what people need to remember about trout is that they naturally just wash down over very, very large waterfalls and survive. And that's why they'll survive that. Ideally, I would have walked into the water there and swam in backwards and forwards. But by the time I bashed my way through all these crappy over, over this vegetation and stuff and got down there, he most likely would have died because he needs water through his gills, especially now that the weather's warming up. Throwing that back is not I throwing it from this height isn't ideal, but it's more ideal than having to, to waste time carrying it all the way around there, and it's much more ideal than not even going fishing at all. That was exciting. I could see this larger fish here, so I thought I'll cast behind it and I'll bring the lure past it. But then when I'd done that, a little trout, probably about 10 or 12 centimeters, came after it, and I thought, no, 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 I didn't want to catch him because if I, I knew if I hooked him. The commotion would spook the bigger one. So I pulled it out of the water real quick. Then I cast, or I attempted to cast right in front of him. It landed right on his head and he literally went bang straight away and grabbed the soft plastic. That was really cool. I love this little. Now, this hole here, this is old faithful. Got heaps of fish here. Although this year I've been here three or four times, three I think, have not seen a single fish in this hole this season the same creek as the other honey hole but I just fish there's one, there's one here there's one here not a bad size not a bad size fish either he's smelling it maybe I need to go and get a little bit of lure scent out of the car what I'm using is my all time favourite this is my go to soft plastic for trout it's the straw tiger one inch nymph in black and gold colour but quite often I'll pull the claws off now I just caught a nice trout on it and the other little honey hole the news hole here I had a follow which tells me maybe somebody's been fishing here the empty cigarette pack on the ground also tells me that somebody's been fishing here seems to be far too much of that going on at the moment strike tiger trout oil I'll put some of that on my strike tiger clawless nymph <laughs> the idea here is that the trout oil will just give that little trout or that nice trout a little bit of added incentive to strike it rather than just follow it if it's got a bit of a smell to it maybe you might uh, just feel a bit more inclined to hit it it's actually the first trout that I've seen in this hole this season that makes me happy 